Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today I want to talk with you a little bit about uh, inlay and specifically face dots. So anyone who knows me knows that I'm not a gigantic fan of, uh, of inlay. Um, I don't have a problem with it, I just like the way a clean fretboard looks, kind of like on a classical guitar. So that's always what I recommend to people is no, uh, no inlay. But, uh, you know, every so often I'll get a guy who really wants to have side dots and face dots. And I'm like, well, why would you want to have side dots and face dots? And they're always like, because I like to party. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, putting some face dots on this neck blank. You can see who this guy is for. Um, now, <clears throat> this one was supposed to have a standard Stratocaster style... Um, uh, headstock, but we got a charming letter from the good people at Fender letting us know that uh, we are not to do that anymore. So um, this is uh, this is our headstock. That this is a little bit a uh, little bit wider through here, this area, than our, our what we put on the daily driver. So it's a little more strat ish e in terms of size. It's obviously not a strat. So um, when it comes to uh, face dots. The, uh, the, they're actually pretty straightforward to, to install. You just need a drill that's the same size as your dot. The problem is, is that here are the dots that you get from Stu Mac. And you can get these from anywhere, of course, but I get these from Stu Mac. Um, there's really no problem with the dots, except I'm always running out of them, and they're kind of they're kind of thin and puny. Um, they don't need to be any bigger than this, but I kind of would wish they were a little bit, a little bit taller. So uh, what I want to talk with you about is making your own face dots out of scrap lumber. Today I'm going to be making face dots for Jim's guitar out of this hunk of uh, black poison wood. This is obviously not big enough to make a, uh, a fretboard with, so this is kind of a just a chunk that is left over. And as you can see, I <laughs> here I already made some dots with uh, with part of this of this lumber. What we're going to use are uh, hole cutters or plug cutters. And I've left a link in the description below so you can just go click right on that link and it'll take you directly to uh, you know an Amazon thing and you can buy them right there if you can't find them in your area. Anyway, here is what they look like. And they cut a nice hole um, in, the, uh, in the material. Now there's a couple different sizes. I like these because they're, they always cut a nice clean hole. I'm not saying that the other ones don't, but these definitely have worked for me. And I've got lots of sizes. I think this is like a half, here's a quarter, here's three-eighths and five-sixteenths. So um, yeah, and these guys work really, really well. I have a little magnet piece right by my drill press that I keep them on so that I don't lose them, but I still do. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make some quarter-inch holes for Jim's guitar. Um, the cool thing about this is you don't have like, uh, um, oh man, I have all of them I need but one. And then, and then you have to order in more, you know, you have to order like, you know, uh, another another 25 of them from Stu Mac or whoever you get your, your these, these dots from. You can just make your own. So for the price of one of these cutters, you basically have an unlimited supply of face dots. Um, let's check it out. Okay, here is the setup on my, uh, my drill press. And uh, let's see, as you can see, it's... It's kind of a short affair, and uh, so you want to make sure to get it whoa nice and close to your material. And then you uh, you gotta have a drill press for this, guys. Uh, you don't have to have a big drill press, but it would certainly help if you didn't do this by hand. So you just sort of turn this guy on and buzz it into the lumber, and um, I'll show you how to do that now. Alright, so as you can see, they all stay in the block, which is handy because it'll go flying out when you, uh, when you use the drill press and you'd never be able to find these little quarter inch plugs. Um, but uh, So now we have to get them out of here. Now, a couple things. <clears throat> these, these bits are a little bit sporty, so you really want to hold on to the piece you're using. It might not be a bad idea to, uh, the first couple times, actually clamp the work piece down to your, your, um, your, your drill press table. Um, and I always make a few extra because when you pop these out, sometimes, you know, you, well, sometimes they do go flying and you're like, oh crap, where'd that one go? Um, or you bust this in half or, or something. So, um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get, 
uh, uh, super highly sophisticated tool to pry these out of here and I'm gonna show you what they look like. We have moved over to my incredibly dirty um, shop table. Oh, and look, here is some, uh, some black versions of the same little dots that I got from Stu Max. So that's gonna come in handy here in a second. So I've just got a chisel and I'm just gonna kinda push it in to, the, um, to where the, the plug is and just kinda pry them right out of there. Um, they'll break right off at the grain so it's a pretty straightforward thing. Just kind of push the chisel in and uh, and pry it away from the soon-to-be side dot. And like I say, if you uh, if you go with the grain, these guys should just bust right along the grain there, and then they look a little like this. Now, <clears throat> what I want you to see is here's the here's the Stumac dot which works perfectly fine. Here is the the soon to be side dot or face dot that I just made. As you can see I can go way into my fretboard with this because they're about a quarter of an inch thick. So I don't have to make sure that um, I'm only you know driving that drill bit in to uh, uh, you know this sixteenth inch exactly perfect to use God these are little pains in the ass to get this little black or or um, um, cream dot that, that Stu Max sells. Um, plus, these are wood and they look cool. All right, we've made all of our face dots and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check these with my caliper and they're just under a quarter of an inch, which is great because now I can go over to my uh, drill index and get a quarter inch brad point bit and uh, mark where all these are gonna go and drill all the holes, which I'm gonna do now. Okay, so I've got my fretboard here is ready to be marked for face dots and uh, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Now, what you could do is you could take your, um, your ruler and go from corner to corner on each one of the uh, locations where you're gonna put a face dot and that works pretty well. Um, it works better, it works better on the, um, these wider frets. So like on the third fret, it works great. When you get down here to like 21, it's a little tricky because your lines intersect at the, the cross is such that you don't have a super fine um, aiming point for your brad point drill bit. So what I like to do is put one down here at the third fret and then maybe one, you know, somewhere in this neighborhood here that uh, will still give me a, a defined aiming point. And then we'll draw a center line using our straight edge. Now, you could also do this with an actual centering ruler, which would probably make a lot of sense too. But I don't want to find my centering ruler. I just <laughs> I want to drill these damn dots. So I know where the third fret's going to go. Now all I got to do, you know what? I am going to find my centering ruler. So now I'm just going to count one, two, three. Obviously, there's going to be one there. Four, five gets one, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 gets two. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Those are all gonna get dots. I've marked each one of those so I don't have to remember or count every time. I already have a center line for um, uh, width. Now I'm going to locate where this guy is gonna go using my centering ruler, which is also a cool tool. And remember, I'm gonna leave links to as many of these tools as I can find in the, um, in the description below and so if you guys are having trouble locating them you can just go to um, to Amazon and get them. Okay so I, I'm not gonna put one here so I'm gonna erase that one so I don't accidentally make a bunch of holes. This guy gets two so we're gonna come back and do that one later. Okay I've got everything marked now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, an awl and poke my centers on all these and then get a brad point drill bit and we'll be ready to go. I have a shop dog with me today I'm not sure what he wants. All right, I've got all of my dot locations marked and I have even poked into the, uh, uh, the center mark for each dot with uh, an awl, or as we call it around here, the very sophisticated term, sticky pokey. And it's always gone. I should probably buy about five of those because, oh, no hey, I got a goose from my dog. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brad point drill bit. And the reason they call it a brad point drill bit is because it's got a brad on it. Um, and what that will do is that will index into the holes that I just poked with my awl. So I'm gonna go ahead and chuck that up into my drill press 
and I'm ready to drill all these holes. Um, now, remember when I said that if we were using the Stumac, these like little clay dots, we would really have to be careful about how deep we went with the drill bit. Well, because we have lots of extra material, we don't give a toss. Okay, I think I had my camera off, but what I'm gonna do, what I'm doing here <clears throat> is I'm actually just gluing in the face dots. Now, um, because I'm gluing wood to wood, I'm just using regular old wood glue. And um, <clears throat> one thing I would, I would caution y'all when you're using these is if you care enough to send the very best, make sure that you line your grain up on the same on all of the dots. So it doesn't really matter which way it's going but if you want to look really cool and really classy, you will try to keep the grain oriented consistently. <clears throat> and sometimes it helps to persuade those damn things in there. So I just got a few more to go here and then we'll wrap it up. All right, so our dots are all in and they all look cool. Now, they are they're still proud of the fretboard there. You can see them all in a row. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, we'll sand these back. As you can also see, <clears throat> this fretboard has not been radiused, so when we put this on our Grizzly Radius Sander, it'll plow through all of that stuff and they'll be nice and even. So, guys, if you have any questions about some of the tools or uh, techniques that we use to put these face dots into this neck for Jim, please leave them in the comment section below. If you're having trouble locating stuff like um, plug cutters or brad point bits or dial calipers, um, I've also got links below uh, to the Amazon website and if you buy them through those links, we get, you know, I don't know, a tenth of a cent. Um, so that'll help the channel out a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. Um, but I've had a lot of people wondering, you know, like where we get these tools and how, hey, how can I find these? Give me links and stuff. So they're already there. From now on, they're going to be in the description below. Um, let's see. If you uh, like the video, give us a thumbs up. And if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to uh, helping us bring you cool stuff like this. Hey, and if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. Um... Let's see, if you can't do Patreon and you can't subscribe, that's totally cool, we get it. Um, but what you could do for us that'd be super helpful is share this video every single place that you can because um, that really helps us out a lot. So, guys, this is Matt at Texas Toast Guitars reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. I wanna play my guitar,